don't mind me. The wind and the rain are all types of disrespectful. Okay. <laughs> so it was more like exactly 10 minutes. I just posted I was going to go live. Hey, everybody. Give it like 10 seconds. And see, this is why I live and drive. This is why I live in my car. Because I'd be so excited and so lit in the car. And I know if I have to gather myself and get out of the car, I'd be a little less lit. And I don't want my exuberance to dull even a little bit. Because I'd be so excited. And that's really why I started making live videos. Because I'd just be so pumped up and excited. And I'm the type of person when I realize, I'm like, Jesus, you just said something to me. Or when I realize he's doing work in my life. I'd be so excited I had to tell somebody about it because I can't be the only person that's excited. I got to make sure that someone else is excited about this. <laughs> well, um, first of all, so Testimony Tuesday. I know some people do Testimony Thursday, but I got to do Testimony Tuesday because I'm just so excited and blessed for how God is blessing me. Two really big things. Um, I was in a car accident last month. I'm alive. I'm okay. I'm well. Nothing broken. Nothing shattered. I'm fine physically. My car was totaled though. So, to be very honest, I was frustrated and a little annoyed because it took a while to get my check, <laughs> to get my new car. But God is so amazing. You know, taking something like an accident, whereas I could have been hurt and I was without my car. Um, I had some good insurance, so I got rentals and different things like that. But it was an inconvenience to be without my car, asking for rides. I don't know about y'all, that was my first car. So to go from being on the bus and asking people for rides and having your own car and having to go back to asking people for rides and anything else and doing what I got to do to get to where I need to be, it was a humbling experience. So I'm very thankful for that. <laughs> but I was, I was so thankful with this whole situation because what my insurance got me for my car was more than double what I paid for my original car, which is amazing. And just everything that had to have happened to where I got my new car that I have. I love my new little car. And one of the things I thought about yesterday while I was driving was when you ask God for what you want, he really gives you whatever you want, you know, as long as it's within his will, even down to the last detail. I remember one time saying, you know, the next car I get, I need a little windshield wiper in the back because I hate when my, you know, the back window fogs up. And I bought the car and I hadn't even, it didn't even register until I was heading home. And I really like to turn the back windshield wiper on. And I just shouted at something so small like that. So I'm like, God, you heard me. You heard me say that I wanted a windshield wiper in the back of my car and you gave me what I wanted. Like, God really wants to bless us. I know a lot of people have ideas and visions about God that he's like waiting to smite you or whatever. First of all, the God I serve, he does not just go around smiting people. And he wants to love us. He wants to bless us. So I was just really excited that even though it came through a crappy situation, I got a car that I like. It's a newer car than what I had. Um, my older car, not too long after I got it, the window wouldn't <laughs> roll up. And it was a couple like small things. It was my first car, used car. And I'm so blessed because I have a newer age car. I think it's about six years newer. Um, not too many miles on it. And just being blessed towards I'm rolling. Because a lot of times if someone, if you get your car, if you get an accident, you're out for the duration. So even though it took a couple weeks, I'm blessed to have been able to get a new car and towards I don't have to have a note and have, you know, be in debt or anything like that. So that was my first blessing. I'm really excited about that. And then the second blessing um, was that I know I posted the other day, so some people saw it. I passed my um, Series 6 investment exam and I'm so excited for that. And I definitely want to just give all honor and glory to God. I know people say that phrase, but literally I couldn't have done that without God. Like me on my own strength, I would not have been able to pass that exam. And I purposely made sure I kept God first in this scenario because I remember it took me a while to get my uh, driver's license. And the second to last time that I took my driver's license exam, I realized I was I, I cried, y'all, because I was so upset because I kept failing it and I couldn't pass my driver's test. I got the maneuverability the first time, but I couldn't pass my driver's exam. And I was so upset and livid and was trying to figure out what was going on. I'm at the, the testing place um, in my car upset and God was kind of like, you ready to put me in your plans? And I realized I had left God out. I had not once talked to God, prayed to God, spoke to him at all about helping me pass my exam. And that's when I realized, you know, you, you have to include God in everything you do. God can never be an afterthought. You know, and a lot of people, they'll think about 
I'm sorry, I'm trying not to be vain. Um, but this piece of hair is bothering me. Um, a lot of people will, will, will have God be an afterthought or, a, a, you know, like a, a last ditch effort or he's the last solution. Like a lot of people, and I've been guilty of it. Let me try it my way. Let me try it 20 different ways my way. Okay, it didn't work my way. God, what's your way? How you want me to do this? And that experience just really let me know because once I put God in the situation, I passed. And that just shows you, you know, that showed me at least. When you let God in and you let God be God and ask for his guidance and letting him reveal his will to you, everything, everything's easier. Everything works better. Some people think becoming a Christian and following Christ is all of these rules and regulations and what you can't do and this, that, and the other. And I realized that being under the covering of God shows me what I can do and it makes it easier. God is so much bigger and stronger and more powerful than I am. So when I give him the reins and let him be God, life is so much easier. That's my own personal opinion. It's just life becomes a lot easier when you let God be God and you let God lead you and you're following in his will. And one of the things um, I wanted to talk about was, now some people call me an old lady because I listen to the radio and I listen to Moody Radio. It's one of the, um, it's one of the three pre-approved stations in my car. But it's a Christian radio station, and they have a lot of talk radio. But sometimes they're songs, but for the most part, there's talk radio. And there's a lot of sermons on Moody Radio. And in my new car, I haven't been I haven't finagled with the dogs. But on my way home tonight, um, I... Oh, and that was another thing. Someone that I respect in business so much. Someone that I was partially trained by and just got to observe and see him grow up in a business. And now he has an office with his wife. They um, allowed me to speak at their meeting tonight and allowed me to speak with their teammate and I do their team. And I don't take that lightly. I feel so honored and loved because me personally, I'm not letting any, any just in, just anybody speak to the people I'm training and helping them build a business. I'm very selective over who I let speak into my team. And I know they're the same way. So I was very honored just to see what they've accomplished and see what they've achieved and to know that we've come from the same beginnings. They got there quicker than I got. But just knowing that we have the same opportunities, just being in a free enterprise system and everything like that, but was just so honored and humbled to just speak and be able to speak into their team and just be able to be a light and just speak into them. But on my way home from their office right now, um, I just happened to turn the radio on and I literally turned it on the second that a new sermon was starting. And one of the things he was talking about, and I have to find out who, who the preacher was, and I might link it in the description, but one of the things he was talking about, um, and I want to make sure I phrase it rightly, but he was saying, you know, we sh as Christians, we shouldn't ask what God's will is for our life because he has it mapped out. He has it laid out for us, and it's in the Word of God. It's in the Bible. Like, God's will for us, he speaks it to us in the Bible. And believe me, I know there are times when it's like, hey, I'm trying, God, I'm trying to listen to you. I'm trying to see what I'm trying to seek your will for me. And it's still sometimes like, hey, I don't understand what you're saying. I don't know what you're saying. So I definitely know there are times like that. But one of one of the uh, not euphemism, one of the analogies he used was if you're walking through a forest, the only time you ask where the path is, is when you've gotten off the path. And I felt that I felt it in my soul. You know, when you're walking in a forest, the only time you ask where the path is is when you've gotten off the path. And it gut checked me and it made me realize, like, if you have to, for me personally, I'm talking to me, if I'm asking God, what is your will? What do you want me to do? Where am I supposed to be going or what have you? Sometimes I just have to sit and think, have you really sat and listened to God? Because a lot of times we'll talk to God, but a lot of times we won't listen. And I'm guilty of that, not listening to God. And some people say, well, how do you listen to God? Some people, sometimes God will speak a word directly to you. Sometimes he will use other people, whether they're in the body or not. God uses non-believers to speak to you. So sometimes there'll be a physical word spoken. But the best way to know what God wants for you and to know his will and to know what he wants you to do and what he's saying to you is reading the word of God. Listening to the word of God, reading it, whatever you want to do, but getting into the Bible because the Bible is the true and living word of God. And that I felt myself I'm about to go off on a whole nother tangent. So I'm going to have to make another video really soon. But that was just, um, I'm just, I'm excited. I'm excited for what God is doing in my life and for being able to see what he's doing 
and what he's keeping me from and what he's bringing me to. And I've already said like months ago when I started making these videos, I just know that this is a time where God, you know, is bringing me to a place of greater. And I'm just excited to share that with other people. I'm really blessed. I wanted to share my uh, my praise reports of being able, I got my new car. I love my new car. And uh, my praise report of passing my investment exam. Um, and just being able to help families in that area and just doing more of my business. So I'm really excited. That's it. I'll make another video soon. Um, you guys, are, like I said, always are free to ask me questions, um, praise requests, share the great, things that, the great things that God is doing in your life. And that's about it. I love you guys. Bye.